Hi, welcome to the Swedish Tank Museum Arsenalen and today we are going to focus on the famous Centurion tank. A really good tank that was used by many countries, also by Sweden. And Sweden bought their first tanks in 1953, Mark III and V. This is the Mark X, which we bought a few years later in 1960. But we start with the Mark III and V tanks that had the famous Rolls-Royce V12 petrol engine, 650 horsepower, a quite um, big fuel consumption. With the fuel that you had on board in the tank, you could travel, well, maybe with this 500 liters of uh, petrol, you could travel perhaps 100 kilometers or so, depending on road or terrain. The fuel consumption was about five to seven liters per kilometer, which is uh, quite a lot. With the Mark 10, they had realized that we need to do something about it. So they extended the uh, increased uh, fuel capacity in the tank from 500 liters to 1000 liters, so you could travel twice the distance, which was enormous improvement. But these tanks in the beginning, they, well, they had difficulties to travel long distances, but there was a solution and it's the solution that we are going to focus on from now on. So we're going to move rear of the tank. If you have a problem, you need a solution. And this is the solution to the problem with fuel capacity. In the tank, the Mark III and V, you had 500 liters. And that gave a cruising range about 50 to 100 kilometers, which is not a lot, depending on the train, of course. With this mono wheel trailer, as it's called, connected to the tank, you could add another 900 liters of petrol. So you can drive on the fuel in this trailer, and then when it's empty, you just drop it and continue your task with the fuel you already have inside the tank. And that was a great solution to a problem. So instead of refueling on the road to the battlefield, which takes some time, you could travel much faster and just drop the trailer and then continue. Many crew members, different countries hated this trailer because it was uh, unreliable. Uh, it fell off, uh, it flooded the fuel system in the tank, etc. But uh, I've used it in Sweden and well, it's not that bad. It's a bit different to, uh, to drive with it and you have to think, but um, it works. And it's a great, great solution to a big problem. At the rear, you fill the petrol in the corners and the wheel is twisting, turning. So depending on which direction you are going, the wheel will turn. So this is for reversing the tank. And when you're going forward, it turns like that. So it follows the tank with this uh, one wheel and that's why it's called the mono wheel trailer. And you can actually, you can drive in cross country, it, it works. Um, and you can reverse the tank, uh, but you have to be a bit careful and look out to see that it doesn't go into a hole in the ground, etc., to break it. So depending on, on the situation, it can be a bit tricky, but if you're going on road, it's absolutely perfect. The trailer is connected with two arms at the rear of the tank and the fuel is a fuel line from the trailer up to the tank. So you suck the, the fuel from the fuel system in the tank from this uh, hose and into, into the tank. And sometimes it could happen that 
it was some overpressure, so you flooded the system and filled the rear of the tank with fuel on the inside, which was not that, that comfortable. Um, the arms at the rear, they are connected in a special hook. And on the inside of the commander's position, there is two buttons. So you can disconnect from the inside, so you don't have to leave the tank to disconnect the trailer, which is in the case of an emergency battle or whatever, you just push the buttons and there is an explosive device in this hook, which open up and it drops to the ground. Sometimes it happened that one of the hooks disconnected, the other didn't. So you drop one arm and then you have a limping trailer dragging behind the, the tank. So uh, I can understand why some uh, crew members thought this was just crap because it was always some situation, some incident. But uh, normally it would fell off and then you could continue with the tank. So this was um, not a bad idea and it was a solution to a problem. And in Sweden we had the tank standing in storage area a bit away from the coastline or from, from the border. So in case of um, a conflict, invasion or whatever, the crew could go to the storage where the tanks were and in 24 to 48 hours the company or battalion was battle ready and on the move towards uh, the supposed battle area. And since this was a bit inland, you needed to have this extra fuel. So you could travel to the battle zone on the fuel you had in the trailer and then drop the trailer and instead of refueling on the way, uh, you will lose a lot of time, you could then continue doing your task with the fuel that you had on board. So that was the general idea. So all the Centurion tanks in Sweden had its own trailer connected to the tank in the storage, filled with petrol, ready to go. But that's history today. When you drop the trailer, you had a company of 12, 14 tanks dropping each trailer. They were scattered around in the area on the roads. Someone needed to pick them up and there was a special device for picking them up and bringing them back again. After dropping the trailer, someone had to pick it up and to pick it up you had this special dolly that you connected one arm to each of these wheels spread out and along tow bar and then you could move this trailer with any, any vehicle to bring it back home again. And this was the Centurion mono wheel trailer, a fantastic solution to a big problem or maybe not so good solution to this problem. If you like our films, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And until next time, bye bye.